Rattlesnake Roundup is one of the most protected events in Texas. Those who have made videos against the Rattlesnake Roundup are not allowed to attend the event. In fact, if you try and get in, you will be threatened with arrest for criminal trespass. Nevertheless, the Rattlesnake Roundup needs to be talked about. Now people might ask, why does this affect me? Well, not only is it cruel and inhumane that these animals are tortured and killed, but the Rattlesnake Roundup actually makes people have more encounters with snakes. And I'm going to tell you how. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Max and I work with a company and I relocate about 2,000 rattlesnakes a year. First of all, we have to address how the Rattlesnake Roundup claims they help the public. Well, they claim to do three things. They claim to extract venom, to sell it off and make anti-venom. They claim to do population control and then they claim to do education. In actuality, none of these things are true. So let's go through each of the things and go through the myth and then let's go through the truth. So what happens with the venom? I know we're trying to use it with Profab and other stuff too as well for the right. anti venom. Right. About 90% of it is used to make the anti-venom. It's, it's used in the anti-venom and, and research. If you go to the page for the Sweetwater Rattlesnake Roundup and go to the Texas Parks and Wildlife document, you will see in the document that none of the venom is actually used. There's two companies that make anti-venom in North America, and that's going to be BTG International, who makes Crofab, the only FDA-approved anti-venom on the market, and then there's Red Rock Biologics, and they make the pet vaccine. The truth is, there's seven venom labs across the country with captive kept snakes in strict laboratory conditions, and that's where we get all of the venom that we use for the medicine. The Nolan County Coliseum is not a sterile environment, it's not safe. So, as a result, it's not used. Organizers for the Rattlesnake Roundup believe that if they didn't round up and kill these snakes, that the population would grow so much that people would be overrun. What would happen if the Rattlesnake Roundup stopped? We would be overwhelmed in Sweetwater with, well, this entire area was with, with rattlesnakes. I think the population uh, would explode just like if they uh, took away deer hunting. The people doing the education for the Rattlesnake Roundup say that females drop 20 to 30 babies on average. If this snake has 18, 19 babies, that would have half of these snakes have that many. A, a average female has 20 babies. 20 to 25 at a time in a litter. They also say that half of them survive. But even if half of those live. Really more than half of any species. And then finally they say the ratio from females to males is 5, 6, 7 to 1. It's about 5 to 1 what we're seeing right now. Maybe even 7 or 8 to 1 females over males. The average litter size of a female western diamondback rattlesnake is going to be about a dozen babies. Out of those babies, most of them die. One of the main reasons for that is the fact that they can't find food, and one of two things happen. Either they starve because they can't make it through the winter because they don't get those fat reserves, or they eat too late in the year, and since they're ectothermic, the food rots inside of them. The reason in nature for an animal to have a lot of babies is that so some might make it to adulthood. It's accounting on a high mortality rate. Finally, the female to male ratio is going to be closer to 40-60. It's not going to be 7 to 1. That's insane. Not only do they perpetuate that there are so many more rattlesnakes that they are, they claim to actually control the population. But with the predator-prey relationship, if you take out a ton of predators out of the habitat, then you get a huge spike in prey population. That means rodents. Yeah, the rat explosion, well, it's, it's more of a myth. Not only are they huge disease carriers, but they have a huge economic impact on people. Now how they make the problem worse is through the use of gasoline. Now while they claim they might use the fumes... They're only fuming. Okay. They're only using fumes. If you actually spray gasoline on the snake, it would potentially kill the snake. Well, they don't use gas. They use the fumes from the gas. They, like, they're not just throwing gas in there. They, gas fumes. That's fumes? Yes, yeah, so we don't, don't use liquid gas. On the Texas Parks and Wildlife document, it estimates that the snake hunters on average use a cup of gasoline per den. Even though they use gasoline, there's no way to get all the snakes. You'll never be able to pull all of them out of the no matter what you do. There's tons of rodent mittens and crevices, and that creates air pockets and it lets the snakes escape. But what does happen is a communal part of the den becomes uninhabitable. They will never use that den again. And where does that send the snakes that they don't get? Closer to residential populations and under people's homes, making it a huge problem for people. 
Finally, the hosts of the Rattlesnake Roundup claim to educate the public. Their definition of education and mine are completely different. Their version of education involves taunting an animal with a balloon to show how aggressive it is, while the animal is just trying to get away. That's not even the worst of it. They decapitate the snake and they hang it up while it's still moving to skin it. After that, they dip their hands in blood and put handprints on the wall. They'll push this ritual and tradition on anyone, even small children. That's what we're here for, y'all. Is education. Education. Okay. education. But other than every other piece of misinformation that you've already heard, here's some of the other things that you'll hear at the Rattlesnake Roundup. I think there's about 12 different hunters. 12. Yeah, yeah, 12 is a lie. It's hundreds. They also believe that rattlesnakes only eat every three months, when in actuality it's about every two weeks. A rattlesnake, it eats about every other month, every three months, maybe. They also believe that snake bite kits and sucking out the venom help, when actually you're isolating it and sucking the venom back down, doing twice the tissue damage. Like a sewer extractor helps them, okay. because it draws the venom out. A lot of people don't think we do and don't think we know what we're talking about. Some of us care about these snakes, but the ones on bottom can't get oxygen to breathe. You don't have oxygen, you die. So if none of these things are true, why do they actually do it? You know it. Money. I told them merchandise, anything you sell, I want a percentage. Yeah. And they didn't like that. I'm a businessman. The Rhinob is a monopoly, which is why it's so heavily protected. Talking with the different hunters in the JCs, you almost get a scripted answer on any of the questions that you ask. When presented with the fact that gasoline was actually harmful to the environment, as if they didn't know already, they said they didn't want to stop gassing because they wouldn't get as many snakes and not as many people would come out and buy these novelty items. So don't listen to any of these scripted answers. They're only out to make money. Don't go buy things, don't attend the roundup, and don't let anybody on your property to go around gassing. That's only gonna cause a lot more problems for you. I know, I've seen it. So their only reason to torture and kill these animals is to make money. So don't support the roundup, but don't listen to gimmicks and don't listen to lies. It's about time we change the image of the Western Diamondback rattlesnake.